welcome again. So in today's lesson, we'll be studying industrial chemistry. And in the previous lesson, we looked at what are the uses of sodium carbonate. And so today, we'll be studying the Solvay process, which is what we do in industry to actually produce sodium carbonate. So this is one of the major industrial manufacturing um, processes. Um, and it's the last process that we'll study in industrial chemistry. So it's also known as the ammonia soda process. Um, and you'll see why that is um, as we go through the process. Um, and it's the main source of sodium carbonate in the world. So when we produce sodium carbonate for use in industry, this is the main method that we use to do that. So this method is quite old. It was developed in the 1860s by Ernest Solvay, hence the name Solvay process. And three quarters of the NaCO2 or Na2CO3 that's produced in the world is produced through the Solvay process, with the remaining quarter um, being mined. So when you consider all of our industrial processes, the only thing that comes close to this one would probably be the harbor process, and about half of the ammonia produced in the world is produced by the harbour process and the other ammonia, the other nitrogen that's taken out of the atmosphere is done through natural processes. So this is a huge process for um, the production of sodium carbonate and it's you know more than, well it's three quarters of the world production. So in general this is what the flow chart looks like. Um, in chemistry we try to there's always a flow chart that we have to remember for this process. And this one is nice because it sort of so shows you the inputs and outputs as well as the interconnections between each of the different processes. So in this flow chart, each number represents a process within the greater Solvay process. And in today's lesson, we'll go through what each of these numbers and processes are. And you can see that there are two major inputs, brine or NaCl solution and calcium carbonate. Okay, so these are the two major inputs. And then, as you can see, all sorts of different things are cycled around through each of these processes. And then you get two major outputs, which is the sodium carbonate, or soda ash, depends what you want to call it, and calcium chloride. Okay? Ideally, the rest of the stuff that comes out in here basically just gets recycled through the process. So you put in this and this, and you get out this and this. Okay, so that's how the general process works. But we'll now we'll look at it piece by piece. So we'll start with number one. So process number one, it's the simplest one, and that's why we start with it, because it's a really, really simple process, and you should know it already. So we take in limestone, which is calcium carbonate, and we essentially heat it up. We just heat it and decompose it into carbon dioxide and calcium oxide. So CaCO3, with the addition of heat, gives you carbon dioxide and calcium oxide. So this reaction is just the decomposition of heat, and we learn that in year 10 science. So very simple process. Now the CO2 that we produce is used in the next step. That's why we look at this one first. So the CO2 is used in the next process. So process two. The CO2 here came from that last step that I just mentioned. Um, in this process, this is, takes up the majority of the, the Solvay process. So this is the most complex sort of one. So for what happens is the brine that we started with, so we have a tank of brine, and we have ammonia bubbled through it. Okay, so, that's for, so the brine has ammonia bubbled through it. And that causes the pH to increase, right? So remembering that ammonia is a basic chemical, it causes the pH to go up or become more basic and creates this NH4Cl, um, so the ammonium chloride. So here's our reaction. You start with NaCl in aqueous form with water and ammonia, and we get ammonium chloride, sodium ions, and the hydroxide ion as well. So once the NaH, uh, the ammonium chloride is formed, the new solution is pumped into a new tank where CO2 is then bubbled through the solution. So if we draw sort of a pipe, there's another tank, this goes here, and now we have CO2. Okay? So 
we had brine with ammonia. Now we've got brine and ammonia, um, and we're adding CO2 to it. Okay. Now what the CO2 does is the CO2 creates hydrogen carbonate ions and water as well as ammonia. Uh, sorry, as well as sodium ions. So the final product is the production of NaHCO3, and that's what we want. That's the main name of the production of the process. So we produce this NaHCO3 by adding carbon dioxide to the water, uh, to the solution that we just made. And that's this carbon dioxide here. So the NaHCO3 is less soluble than NaCl um, under basic conditions, so it precipitates out. Okay? So when the solution is basic, NaHCO3 is less soluble than sodium chloride, so it becomes precipitated out. Okay? And the reason why we use ammonia is because it helps to buffer the solution. So as we continue to add CO2, we know that as we add CO2, the acidity of the solution will increase because uh, it forms carbonic acid. But by having that NH3 there, it tends to absorb those extra H pluses to stop the um, acidity from rising. And when the acidity rises, it causes the, the redissolving of this NaHCO3, which means that it, it goes back into solution. And we don't want that. We want, it, we want this to precipitate out because we want to collect it. So by using the ammonia, it helps to keep this in solid form so it doesn't, precipit it doesn't dissolve in the acidic solution. So we want to keep the solution basic, so we use this NH3. Okay. So now that we've produced the NaHCO3 from the previous process, number two, we actually want to turn it into sodium carbonate now. So what we do is we take that NaHCO3 from the previous process and we heat it, and that forms our Na2CO3. So by application of heat on this sodium hydrogen carbonate, we form sodium carbonate, which is the actual product that we want, um, CO2 and H2O. Okay? So you can see that it just breaks down into these products. Okay? Now that CO2 that you produce here can actually be reused in process two limiting the greenhouse gas emissions. So we actually take that CO2 and put it back into process two, and that helps us to recycle the CO2 um, around the process. So that's why the arrow points back towards the direction of, of process two. Okay, so basically that's the simple process, right? You just apply heat to the product of process two, and we get um, the actual sodium carbonate that we want out. Now, the last process is the ammonia recovery. So remembering from the harbor process that it takes a fair bit of energy to get ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen in the air. So if we're a chemical factory, we actually want to try and hold on to that ammonia as much as possible. So what we do is we try to recover it um, so that we can reuse it again. So after we take out the NaHCO3 from the solution, so remembering from process two, we had a solution of ammonium chloride, uh, maybe some brine, um, and we took out all the NaHCO3 to put into process three. So now we're going to look at the solution that was left over after we took out the NaHCO3. Okay? So we need to get that NH3 back. So the solution is reacted with calcium oxide from process one. So remember from process one, we had CaCO3 went to form CaO plus CO2, right? That was the first process that we talked about. Well, we used this one already in process two, but now we want to use this, okay? So we put this CaO back into the solution of ammonium chloride and um, of ammonium chloride, basically. And that will react in the following way. So you see, the ammonium chloride reacts with the calcium oxide to form calcium chloride, ammonia, which is what we want, which is good, and water. Okay. So this allows the ammonia to be recycled back to process two. 
So you can see that the ammonia is pointing back towards process two because we've added this CaO. Okay, just by adding CaO to the solution, we can get the ammonia back. So here's the flow chart again, um, the final one. So what happened is we decomposed this with heat. So that's process one. The CO2 goes to process two, and the CAO goes to process four. Right? And in process two, we took in the brine, we added NH3, we added CO2, and we got out NaHCO3. Okay? Then we put that into process three and heated it again and we get Na2CO3, as well as uh, carbon dioxide. Now that goes back into process two for recycling purposes, and that's fine. And then we get our product out. And remembering that now that we've added this NH3, we form ammonium chloride, and that goes into our process four, where we add CaO, and then we get NH3 back. So we're re constantly recycling all these different materials, and we also get this calcium chloride out as well. Okay, so basically we start with these two, we end up with these two, and then there's all this recycling of material in between, and that's the whole point of the Solvay process. Okay, so that's some that pretty much wraps up today's lesson on the Solvay process. So we actually looked at each section of the Solvay process and how the chemistry works. So now we're going to move on to the question segment and see if we can put it all together um, to answer some questions. So what are the products of the Solvay process? Seeing as you just saw that diagram, it should be very easy for you to remember. Sodium carbonate is obviously one, because that's the whole point of the Solvay process, to produce sodium carbonate. And the calcium chloride that comes out is also a major product because of the recycling of ammonia. Now discuss the ability of the Solvay process to recycle unused reactants. So, you know, how good is it at rea you know, recycling all these un un unused reactants? So, it costs money to produce the chemicals needed to make sodium carbonate, obviously. It costs money to, make am to get ammonia, probably not as much money to get brine um, and calcium carbonate. So ammonia is probably the most expensive. So recycling of chemicals can help reduce the cost of production. Okay, so that's a good thing. It also helps to protect the environment, particularly that CO2 that's constantly being you know, recycled around the process. We want to keep that under wraps as much as possible. So in Australia, economic methods to recycle calcium chloride are needed though. So in Australia, when we produce sodium carbonate, we don't really have a good way of dealing with calcium chloride because it doesn't have many uses. If this can be achieved, a win-win situation both economically and environmentally will be achieved. So if we can get a an effective recycling of calcium chloride, um, which is the major problem in terms of recycling, um, then it's a good win-win situation for everyone, both economically and environmentally. So overall, the Solvay process is quite good at recycling materials. The only exception is calcium chloride, where we can't recycle it properly and so we need to figure out a way to do that. So write a balanced equation to show the overall Solvay process. So what this requires is basically taking each of the processes and adding them together and removing all the things that show up on both sides. So process one is just this, the decomposition of calcium carbonate. Process two is the addition of CO2 and ammonia to the brine solution to give you the, the sodium hydrogen carbonate and ammonium chloride. Process three is the decomposition of the sodium hydrogen carbonate to form sodium carbonate and carbon dioxide. And process four is the conversion of ammonium chloride with, the, with calcium oxide to form calcium chloride and ammonia. So you piece all the things together so add all the left-hand parts of the equations and add all the right-hand parts of the equations together and then remove uh, and cancel all the terms that appear on both sides and you'll get the following. 2NaCl plus CaCO3 gives you CaCl2 plus sodium carbonate. Okay? And if you looked at the original flowchart, you could have just said, you know, things on the left added together give you the things on the right that come out. 
and that's the overall process because the rest gets recycled throughout the different processes in the Solvay process. So what is the function of ammonia in the Solvay process? So the ammonia in the Solvay process is used to reduce the acidity of the solution so that the sodium hydrogen carbonate can precipitate out. Right? So that's the major, uh, the major use of it. So we keep the solution alkaline or basic such that the solubility of sodium hydrogen carbonate is less than sodium chloride and that helps to precipitate it out. Additionally, it helps buffer the solution so that when CaO2 is added to the brine solution, the acidity doesn't increase um, because that will stop the precipitation process. If the acidity goes up, what happens is the NaHCO3 will dissolve back into solution and then you'll, you won't be able to get it out of that solution to decompose by heat. So that's the major function of ammonia in the Solvay process. So question 10. During the preparation of calcium oxide, 5,000 kilograms of limestone is heated. Calculate the volume of carbon dioxide produced at 25 degrees Celsius and 100 kPa if the molar volume is 24.79 liters. Okay. So first we start obviously by calculating the number of moles of CaCO3 that we start with. Okay, so we have 5,000 kilograms of limestone, which is calcium carbonate. And so 5,000 times 1,000, because it's 5,000 kilograms, so we have to turn it into grams. So there's 1,000 grams in a kilogram. And then we can look up the molar mass of calci um, calcium carbonate, which is 100.09. And that gives us 5 times 10 to the 4 moles. Okay, So it's about 50,000 moles. So NCACO3 is 5 times 10 to the 4 moles. And that happens to equal the number of moles of CaCO. So CaCO3 goes to form CaO plus CO2. Right? Now, the mass of, of CaCO3, uh, sorry, sorry, CaCO, it, CaO is just 5 times 10 to the 4 moles times its molar mass, which is 56.08 which is 28, uh, 2.8 times 10 to the 6 grams, which is 2 million grams, 2.8 million grams, which is about 2.8 tons. So N of CaCO3 is 5 times 10 to the 4 moles again, which is also equal to the number of moles of carbon dioxide. Right? You can see that it's 1 to 1. So the volume of CO2 that you produce is simply 5 times 10 to the 4 times the molar volume and that gives you 1.24 times 10 to the 6 liters, which is about you know, 1,240 meters cubed. Okay? So that's how we calculate it. You always start with the number of moles of something that you know, and then you follow through until you can work out everything that you need to. And you always have to relate it to the chemical equation. Okay? So that wraps up today's lesson on the Solvay process. So we looked at what each part of the Solvay process does and how it interacts with the other processes to form the sodium carbonate that we want out. Okay, so in the next lesson, we'll look at what are the environmental issues associated with this process and how can we mitigate them as much as possible. So I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson. Mm -hmm.